Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're gonna to do a recipe out of this cookbook. And this copy was printed in 1855, but the book was originally published in 1850. And it is called Mrs. Bliss Practical Cookbook. Soups, fish, meats, vegetables, and I'm sure there's other things down the spine, but the rest of the spine is missing. And this book has been, um, this book has been places, you can tell. There are written notes inside in two or three different handwritings, uh, some in pencil, and some of it's written in fountain pen, uh, which is really cool. And we're gonna do a recipe called lemon pie. And it starts out with melted butter and sugar, and we mix these together. Now at the beginning of this chapter on pastes and pies, uh, it's called general observations, but there are four pages of observations. And it essentially says that if these recipes don't work out, it's your own inexpertise, uh, that you just haven't learned enough about making pies, and that it takes a lot to learn how to bake a pie, and that you know you will spoil the best materials, and nothing good will come of it if, uh, if you don't know what you're doing. And that may come back to haunt me uh, later in the recipe. So I started this operation with a wooden spoon. I think I'm going to switch out to a whisk. Yeah, that's much better. That's gonna get us where we need to be. Yeah, it says to beat this to a cream and that just was not gonna happen with a wooden spoon. And when I see beat, I usually think wooden spoon. Um, but whisk, a whisk is what's gonna get us there in this instance. Now next in are six egg whites and eight egg yolks. So, right in. And the last egg yolk. And we'll just whisk that up too. Next, it asks for the grated rind of two lemons and the juice of one. So we'll get the zest grated in, and then I will juice one of the lemons, and we'll pour that in and mix it up. And the filling is done at this point. So I'm gonna set that aside. We have reached the first major crossroads in this recipe where I'm kind of uh, confused and not really sure of exactly what to do. The recipe states, pour it into a deep dish lined with paste number eight. So I've got some paste number eight. It is basically just a butter pie crust, butter, flour, sugar. Very simple. Now it says to put it into a deep dish lined with this pastry. So in 2020, these would be deep dish pie plates uh, between nine and a half and 10 inches across, maybe an inch and a half to two inches deep. And they take about one liter of, of filling to fill them up. We don't have one liter. We've got 700 milliliters, so a little bit less. Other pie recipes in this book say to put it into a soup plate lined with pastry. And so this is a soup plate. Um, as you can see, it is a very wide, shallow bowl, not that much different from what eventually becomes a pie plate. There are other recipes in here that tell me to use a pie plate. And in 1850, a pie plate was uh, very shallow, a little bit wider. Most of them were made out of tinned copper. And I'll throw up a picture. I don't own one. I could buy one, but <laughs> I looked into it and they're like 400 bucks. And I don't have 400 bucks for something that I was only gonna use once. So I don't know which to do. I know that these are about a liter of, of filling and this regular nine inch shallow pie plate is 600 milliliters and I've got 700 milliliters of, of, of uh, filling. So I think I'm gonna put the pie pastry into this one and we'll see what happens. So rolling pie pastry is pretty simple. A Little bit of flour out on your bench. Put the pie pastry into the flour. I usually turn it over, so I make sure I've got a little bit of flour on both sides, and then just start rolling it out. And somewhere between a 90 degree and 180 degree turn after every roll will help you get it round-ish. And don't be afraid to turn it over and move it around on the bench, uh, just to make sure that it doesn't stick. 
Okay, I think we are there. So in comes the pie plate and in goes the crust. Push it down. And I fold it under so that I can get a nice rim at the top. Now this is where we've reached another point in the recipe where it doesn't give me an instruction, but my better judgment tells me that I should be doing something. And that is par baking or partially baking this crust before we put this really liquidy filling into it. And par baking the crust, um, so you'd put pie weights in it, you put it in the oven for about 15 minutes, sort of partially bake it. It would keep the bottom from being soggy and it would give you a really nice crust underneath. This says nothing about par baking. And even in the four pages at the beginning, it says nothing about par baking, and it just talks about when you have a liquid filling like this one, don't put it into the pie shell until you're ready to stick it right into the oven. So, against my better judgment, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour in the filling and stick it in the oven. If I was making this at home, not for this show, and just doing it on my own, I would definitely be par baking. Now, I'm going to stick a baking tray underneath it first before I pour in the filling. I'll give the filling one kind of last wiggle with the whisk and in it goes. Ooh, there we go. Now the recipe book doesn't give me a temperature, but in the general observations it says, great care is requisite in heating an oven for baking pastry. If you can hold your hand in the heated oven while you count 20, the oven has just the proper temperature. So I'm going to say that's 375 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and it tells me a half an hour. So into the oven it goes. And you'll notice I've got my pizza stone in here. My hope is that it's carrying enough heat that it can really start that bottom crust to bake quickly. In this time period, you may have been putting it directly on the deck of a wood burning oven and that heat would transfer very quickly, which might mean you wouldn't need to par bake the shell. I'm really worried about that. We'll see what happens. Hi, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hi, friends. 1855 lemon pie. Any pie is good pie. I know. <laughs> we know this rule. Yep, the pie that's in front of me, that's the pie. Oh, I don't know what to start with because the crust looks really good. Uh, it's, I, it's our, just, I just want to snap just it snap off. Just snap it off. Okay, so let's let's give it a go. Uh, the texture is kind of weird. It almost looks like it could be a custard, but you tell me. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not a custard because there's no milk. There's no dairy. It's just eggs and lemon. It's not quite a souffle, but it's kind of a souffle. The lemon flavor is like... It's really great lemon. Wow, it's, yeah. It is um, a cakier texture than w when you have like lemon meringue, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it, but it's not cake. No. But it has it has more of a cakey texture. The lemon right. flavor is amazing. But lemon meringue has that very smoothness to it. Very smooth. This is not smooth in that way, but it is flavorful and lovely. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a problem with it because it's already gone and we're only doing tasting right now. I know. So. <laughs> I've been worried about the bottom of the crust being soggy because it wasn't par baked. Baking it on the pizza stone really bumped that up a notch. The bottom crust is nicely cooked. Now, something that I missed um, because there's so many sections in this in this pie section. When you go back to paste number eight. It says to brush a beaten egg over it and sprinkle with sugar before you put the filling in. Now, because this recipe is spread across so many pages in so many different sections, I missed that. And I know that putting a, um, a beaten egg over a pie crust that you've just par baked, you pull it out mm -hmm. after, well, it's still hot, you brush that egg on. And you're gonna see that in an upcoming pie video. You brush that egg on and that egg sort of cooks in and makes sure that that pie crust is really crispy. Um, you're going to see that in our Thanksgiving pie, which Canadian Thanksgiving is this week. Um, this week. Yeah, it's soon. And so I do that there, and that is that is a um, that is a technique that sort of fell out of favor, and not many people know about it. But I think it should be brought back. 
It, so there it is from 1855. It's not new. So when someone says, I invented this, they did not. They did not. It's everything, everything has been done. It's just been forgotten at some point, probably. And then, and then rediscovered people, because people rediscover stuff. That pie's a winner. I agree. 1855 lemon pie. Give it a try. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.